Hi friends, welcome back to our series of sessions on sensors and transducers. Today we shall discuss about photovoltaics. Photovoltaics are also commonly known as solar cells. The photovoltaic effect is first discovered in 1839 by Edmund Becquerel. Photovoltaics are conveniently used as photosensors, more popularly used as solar cells for power generation. These photovoltaic cells consist of two or more layers of semiconductors with one layer containing positive charge and the other negative charge lined adjacent to each other. Sunlight consisting of small packets of energy termed as photons strikes the cell where it is either reflected transmitted or absorbed. When photons are absorbed by the negative layer of the photocell, the energy of the photon gets transferred to an electron in an atom of the cell. With the increase in energy, the electron escapes the outer shell of the atom. The freed electron naturally migrates to the positive layer creating a potential difference between the positive and negative layer. When the two layers are connected to an external circuit, the electron flows through the circuit, creating a current. Typically, we see here, this is a, a glass lens. We have negative electrons. We have positive holes. Holes are nothing but when the electrons move, the gap or the hole that is created is called as the holes, which are usually positive because it's losing the electron. Then this is the P substrate of the silicon. Then this is the N substrate. And in between, we have a depletion layer. Okay, And this is how the circuit is connected. And the electron flow is like this. This is how the thing. Then this is the solar radiation, which we normally call it as photon light. And this is how the symbol, photovoltaic symbol, uh, cell symbol is given. Then let's see if, how a photovoltaic cell works as seen, as already seen, we have the sunlight. This is the front contact and we have an anti-reflective coating to this. And when we are connecting the negative and positive to a light bulb, we get the bulb glowing. And then when we connect them in modules, because each cell, we connect them in modules and each modules are again interconnected as an array of the so photovoltaic. Because when you do it in series and parallel, connect, the, connect it in series and parallel, you get the total DC power. And then if you want it to store it for the night, you have a battery. And then the DC power is given to inverter, which converts DC to AC. And then you have a meter and a fuse box which are connecting to the grid. Otherwise, we can uh, from through this we can straight away use it for the home appliances. And this is how overall how a solar cell works because cells become modules and modules become arrays. This is a module and this is an array array of solar uh, panels. And then this is how it is connected in the circuit. So if you see the basic diagram of photovoltaic system. The total components and subsystems that in combination convert solar energy into electrical energy suitable for connection to a utilization load. Load is nothing but whatever we connect to, whether they are the resistive load, inductive load, or capacitive loads. Okay. So then energy source, we have PV array is connecting, converting the energy into DC power, then given to inverter. And battery is optional if you want to storage, then give it to the load center. Power distribution center from there to the a bulb is a resistive load. The fan is an inductive load. And like this, we give for different loads for the electric utility. Then this is the other form of representation, solar uh, radiation to photovoltaic panels. Panels to photovoltaic charge controller plays a very important role in that. Then we have PV batteries for this. Then this is given to inverter and it is given to energy consumption. And this is another form of uh, panels, which we are uh, giving it to a charger, charge converter, either it is stored or directly given to a meter to connect it to the grid. 
power supply grid. And through inverter, we can always use the AC loads. You see the advantages of photovoltaic cell. The first one is the environmental sustainability. Photovoltaic cells generate clean and green energy as no harmful gases such as carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides, etc., are emitted. Also, they produce no noise pollution, which make them ideal for application in residential areas. Then it is economically viable. The operation and maintenance costs of the cells are very low. The cost of solar panels incurred is only the initial cost, that is the purchase and installation. Then we have accessibility. These panels are easy to set up and can be made accessible in remote locations or sparsely inhabited areas at a lesser cost as compared to conventional transmission lines. They're easy to install without any interference with the residential available. Then they are renewable because it is free and abundant in nature. And as long as the sun shines, it is renewable energy. Then the recurring costs are very, very less because as solar panels have no mechanically moving parts except in some highly advanced sunlight tracking mechanical cases. Consequently, the sonar pa solar panel price for maintenance and repair is literally negligible. Then if you see the disadvantage of photovoltaic cell, the efficiency of solar panels is low compared to other renewable sources of energy. And energy from the sun is intermittent, unpredictable, and can only be harnessed in the presence of sunlight. Also, the power generated gets reduced during the cloudy weather. Then we have Long range transmission of solar energy is inefficient, difficult to carry. The current produced is DC in nature and the conversion of DC current to AC current involves the use of additional equipment such as inverters associated with their own losses. Then the another thing is photovoltaic panels are very, very fragile and can be damaged relatively easily. Additional insurance costs are required to ensure to safeguard of the investments. Then if you see the solar efficiency, the photovoltaic cell the, is the, if you want to see the efficiency, which is nothing but the ratio of electrical power produced by the cell to the amount of sunlight it receives. To measure efficiency, the cells are combined into modules, which are in turn assembled into arrays. The resulting panels are then placed in front of a solar simulator that mimics solar sunlight conditions. 1,000 watts of, for example, 1,000 watts of light per cubic meter at an ambient temperature of 25 degrees centigrade. The electrical power produced by the system or peak power is a percentage of the incoming solar energy. If a panel measuring one square meter generates 200, mega, 200 watts of electrical power, it has an efficiency of 20%. The maximum theoretical efficiency of a PV cell is around 33%, which is normally referred to as Shockley Quasar theoretical limit. This is the theoretical limit of first generation and second generation solar cells, uh, which cannot go beyond the 33% of the efficiency, conversion efficiency. Then if you see the real life situation in a real time world, the amount of electricity produced by a cell known as its output is based on its efficiency. The average annual sunshine of the surrounding area and the type of installation, also it depends. Incident solar radiation varies significantly, measuring one megawatt hour per square meter per year in the Paris area versus roughly 1.7 megawatt hour per square meter per year in Southern, Southern Sahara. These are all the you know, minimum and maximum limits in the world if you see. So in this, even if we consider that the solar panel with a 15% efficiency will be the energy efficiency rating, it will generate 150 kilowatt hours per square meter per year in Paris. Whereas in Southern Sahara, it is 450 kilowatt hours per square meter per year in Sahara. So anywhere in the world, we can generate based on this minimum and maximum. So on an average, we can conveniently generate 300 kilowatt hours in India. 300 kilowatt hours of power can be conveniently produced per square meter of the panel area per year in India. And that is the real time situation of the thing. So considering this, government of India has been giving so much of importance 
in bringing this solar cells onto the rooftops uh, wherein uh, if you really do not consider the um, uh, you know the aesthetic sense number one and uh, number two uh, the basic vastu what we normally call because the sun travels from east to west and uh, towards the south so the panel has to be inclined towards the south but Indian vastu says the house has to be uh, you know tilted towards north or east no, but but for that, and if you can really make this roof taller systems, it can generate the power required for the entire thing for an ideal conditions in India. And this is the power generation for uh, a plant. Uh, say this is a typically a megawatt, one megawatt plant, which produces um, you know a megawatt of power, which you can either use it for the say utility or to the institutions or to the organizations. And then the surplus power can always be given back to the grid, where you can receive the, uh, you know, your costs of electricity from the electric electrical utility. And that's the advantage of these solar cells. So if you see the installed and solar total solar power capacity in 2019, in terms of megawatt, and China leads uh, with total capacity of uh, 204 gigawatt, and 30,000 annual added capacity is around 30. So 230 gigawatt, you can say United States is only 76 gigawatt. And in India, we have around 42,000 gigawatt and 10,000. If you combine both, it is over 50,000, 50 gigawatt. That is 50,000 megawatt is the solar installed power capacity in India, which is considerable. And this is this will increase year on year with the reduced costs of installation, reduced cost of power generation, reduced cost of panel, solar panel produce, producing. Now that's the uh, state of uh, affairs. Even if the low sunshine area uh, countries like France is generating around 10,000 megawatt of power and uh, a, a sunshine country like India, the future is much more and we can generate more power through this solar energy. That's all about photovoltaics. I uh, hope um, you have enjoyed this. Thank you very much.